Do you know what is a supply chain attack? The Israeli intelligence agency just carried out a supply chain attack on Hezbollah pagers, which enabled them to detonate them remotely and kill and injure several Hezbollah members. The same attack can be done on your hardware wallet to steal your seed phrase and steal your Bitcoin. I'm Sina, business professor and co-founder of 21st Capital. Several clients have come to us saying they lost all their coins. And one of the ways this can happen is through supply chain attacks and tampered hardware wallets. In this video, we're going to talk about what happened to the Hezbollah pagers and also explain what is a supply chain attack and how your hardware wallet can be vulnerable and how to protect yourself. So I've got some slides here. So yesterday we all heard about uh, massive numbers of the Hezbollah um, pagers exploding and, and injuring the owners. But a lot of people initially thought this is some sort of a virus that caused the batteries to overheat and explode. But later, uh, some reports emerged that indicated that uh, the attack was actually a supply chain attack, and which enabled the Israeli intelligence agency to conceal explosives in those devices and detonate them remotely. So they successfully carried out this attack and injured 3,000 Hezbollah members and uh, killed nine of them. This is the moment a pager carried by a Hezbollah member exploded in Beirut. It was one of thousands of similar incidents that took place across Lebanon. But we don't want to talk about the Middle East conflicts here. What really caught my attention was the method of the attack. It turns out that they managed to infiltrate the manufacturing or distribution process of these pagers to conceal explosives in the device. Uh, this enabled them to detonate it whenever they want uh, remotely through uh, by sending some sort of signal or a text message to those pagers that will trigger the explosion. This is a prime example of a supply chain attack, and the same attack can be carried out on our hardware wallet. But let's see what a supply chain attack is and how we can protect ourselves against it. All right, if you are an attacker and you want to attack a, uh, a company's systems, they typically uh, have a lot of strong protections against ex external attacks uh, because that's where they expect the attacks to come from. But uh, if an attacker can identify the supply chain that these companies are using, and by supply chain, we mean all the suppliers that provide goods and services to these companies. Now, in this case, I have a service supplier example. Uh, the client company is has a contract with a managed service provider that gives uh, provides them some sort of service. And to do that, they have trusted channels between them that uh, enables the service provider to securely work with the systems of the client. So if an attacker is not successful attacking the company directly, uh, instead, they can attack one of their uh, supply chain companies and, and identify a vulnerability in the systems of, for example, this service provider and infiltrate those. And then from there, because the service provider has a secure channel, has a trusted channel with the client company, they can easily get into the target system and uh, do whatever they want. All right. Now, the same thing can happen to your hardware wallet. Why? Because like many other electronic products, uh, the hardware wallet companies have to work with several suppliers mm, to acquire all the components they need to manufacture your product. If any part of the supply chain is attacked and compromised, attackers can include certain malicious code or malicious hardware in your hardware wallet to steal your seed phrase and ultimately take control of your coins. And if someone gains physical access to your hardware wallet along the supply chain, they would theoretically be able to uh, open it up and uh, swap some of the genuine components with uh, tampered and compromised ones. Here's an example of Kraken Security Lab trying to tamper with a Trezor hardware wallet.
Now what's really important to us is how to protect ourselves against such attack. Well, if you understand what's happening, someone is taking control of the hardware wallet or some of the components that are coming from supply suppliers throughout the supply chain, right? So what you really have to be careful is, first of all, be very judicious in what hardware wallet company you choose and whether they have sufficient protections uh, and quality control. But also you got to make sure that you acquire the hardware wallet through safe and secure channels. Okay, so here I have a few tips for you to be able to protect yourself better. So first of all, you have to verify the authenticity of the hardware wallet device. The best way to do that is to acquire the wallet directly from the manufacturer, or if they have an official retailer, work with those. But do, but never buy hardware wallets from third parties or people uh, that don't have an official relationship with the manufacturer. Also, uh, when you acquire a hardware wallet, look for signs of tampering and counterfeit products. Several of the manufacturers have seals on the product that provide some minimal level of assurance as well. Those are nice, but there are uh, by no means uh, sufficient because an attacker can also manufacture those seals as well. Second, be wary of discounts. Discounts are the primary mechanism uh, where people can uh, convince you to buy from a third party. Be cautious of unusually low prices as they may indicate counterfeit or compromised products. But if you're buying from the, directly from the manufacturer, you won't have a problem like this. Try to avoid buying hardware wallets on Amazon as much as possible, let alone any other online marketplace. If you can, always go to the uh, manufacturer's website directly. Three, keep your hardware wallet's firmware updated to address any known vulnerabilities. If the manufacturer identifies a problem and solves it, you have to update the firmware to also uh, patch that vulnerability in your hardware device. Lastly, be very careful with physical security. After you have acquired your hardware wallet, you should not let anyone have physical access to it. Store your hardware wallet in a secure location and protect it from unauthorized access because uh, attackers can uh, take it, tamper with it, and, and, and add code or hardware that extracts your seeds. And next time you want to use the hardware wallet and you put in all your information, that information will be sent to the hacker. Now guys, that's it. Be very careful with supply chain attacks. These are really easy ways to steal all your money because you think you can trust the hardware wallet. But if you don't know where it has been and what sort of third parties have gained access to the product, uh, even if the manufacturer did everything uh, properly, if, if somewhere along the ship, shipping uh, an unauthorized party gained access to it and tampered with it, you are at risk. So be very careful and ensure that you buy directly from manufacturers and you have visibility and, uh, and understanding of how the product is shipped to you and who is involved and whether those are trustworthy companies. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you liked this video. This is how to contact me. I'm on Twitter, Sina underline 21st. And you can also contact 21st Capital for any question about Bitcoin custody, security, and analytics. We provide comprehensive educational courses. If you, if you want a custom made or a group course about Bitcoin and about security of it, about economics of it, we provide that service. If you have a problem with uh, taking custody of your coins, uh, establishing uh, single SIG and multi SIG wallets, and or if you want uh, a collaborative custody service, or if you'd like uh, to uh, set up legacy planning, um, definitely reach out to us. I hope you like this video. Put your questions in the comment section below, and we will read and answer all of them. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next video.